For me, the, the excitement of start trying to make a replicate a CG human is that, replicating a CG human. I don't think there's been anything done quite to this level in engine. It's all kind of ghetto and bottom of the barrel just so we can make stuff cost effective. So Mike, probably with Bernie, but mostly Mike, just built this rig so that we can do with humans or with props exactly what the photogrammetry approach to Adam was with a full building. Like if I take a snap of Mike right now um, and all of these cameras fire and I have him in 360 degrees and then computer software will extrapolate a 3D object. And we've got 32 different angles of them captured simultaneously in a millisecond. Every camera will triangulate and find all the different points. That point cloud is then turned into geometry. So now we have a model, but the model doesn't move. So that's the second second phase of the performance capture. Then we've got the, the facial capture that is totally separate from the body. Instead of taking one human face and then creating morph targets and putting bones in it and then driving the bones to deform the face based on facial capture, we have a single face of geometry per frame. So at 30 FPS or 40 FPS, we're bringing in that many new pieces of geometry it's like Mickey Mouse in classic animation when you just scrub through the paper and you watch it change. You're just seeing fresh geometry per frame. Nothing is deforming. It is the true geometric capture, and that is going to make it look more real. Well, the main challenge on this project is combining traditional motion capture for the body with uh, face animation capture and putting it together to be played in the engine. There are kind of two different performances that need to be blended together, and that brings a lot of challenges. It's so subtle that it's hard to explain. It's like the tiniest little twitches that you don't really, you don't see, but you perceive it. Some little vibrations that are missing. To get the best performance capture, you have to separate body performance and facial performance, but there's a this disconnect between their body and their face. You know, when you move your eyes, your eyelids move with them. They're just looking ahead, performing their, their stuff. But we want their eyes to move like it does with the body. <laughs> you get some really weird eye stuff going on with the performance capture, and we're like, shoot, how the heck are we gonna solve this? And when you watched it, it made you very uncomfortable because the, the eye performance was just so jarring. And I'm like, well, it's, you know, easy. You just, we animate their eyelids on top. And the guys were like, oh, that's like a huge, how the heck are we gonna do this technically? Eric, um, our sort of rigor is like, shoot, I don't know how this could be really hard to solve. Um, so high point, conversely, was when he did solve it. <laughs> he was able to blend and layer together sort of a dynamic rig that he built for the eyelids that would ride on top of the facial performance. And so we got this sort of seamless blend between hand animated eye darts that match the reference footage of the body capture, and that would dynamically drive the eyelids blended back into the captured facial performance. On the mocap shoot day, uh, Carly, who plays um, the character Miriam in the piece, had a super emotional moment in her performance. I mean, she's sobbing and crying, and there's all these quivers in her in her face, all of those little subtleties that are happening, you know, at like 30 frames a second or less, and then stream back into the into the final piece. <laughs> Honestly, I, I I don't know if we got it right yet. Like, we won't really know until everyone sees it. The the really beneficial element that I think helped was the Unity engine. The actors drove the facial performance, we captured it, and then we streamed the geo and crunch those simulations for you know however long it takes and then bring it back in. The more thinking and tricks that you can do to get as close to capturing pure reality as possible and then watching it recreate itself in real time, the better it's gonna look.